seeing is believing. That's the most credible and the most powerful sense that we have. We need to see things. We long to see things. In my mind, like for 10 years, there's no question there is a black hole and there's no question it's possible. I still want to see that stupid image. Yeah, I want to see it. The Event Horizon Telescope is a new instrument that a global team is assembling that will have the magnifying power sufficient to resolve the region immediately around a black hole. We want to image an event horizon, take the first picture of a black hole. It's very difficult to do that. A black hole is very elusive. It's very small. To see the black hole, we need an Earth-sized telescope. We can't do that, but the next best thing we can do is set up telescopes around the Earth that can talk to each other, that can record data in tandem, and time tag it so well exactly when each waveform arrived at each telescope. We can combine these data and make the telescopes act like they were actually one telescope. So the Event Horizon Telescope is right now an array of nine dishes across the globe, from the South Pole to the Arizona desert to Hawaii to Chile, creating effectively an Earth-sized telescope. In 2008, we joined this project. And it's like maybe 25 people. It's relatively small. And now we are more than 200 people spread all over the world. Very international. So it's getting bigger and bigger and getting more complex. But what is really exciting is we have more stations. That is really, really fundamental to getting good images. So over the past nine years, what we've done is slowly build the array out. We've gone to new sites, and we've had to convince those new sites that the science is worthy. And we've had to install very specialized and expensive equipment at all of these sites. We are pushing state-of-the-art, always. The photons we detect and the, and the signals we pick is so faint that it wouldn't work with anything that's available normally. So we're inventing new technologies that's on the cutting edge. We're building superconducting receivers. We're building digital signal processors with more and more processing power. I find it so exciting to be at the cutting edge. And April 2017, all of that was ready. We had a time period of about two weeks where uh, all the telescopes were willing to give a number of days to be part of the Event Horizon Telescope Array. SMT, technically ready, weather forecast possible of high wind, but unlikely to cause anything. So SMT, go. We needed good weather. We needed good weather simultaneously in six places all over the world. Apex, technically go, weather excellent. And we were very lucky to actually have that good weather happen practically day after day after day to the point that we were all exhausted. We have been so fortunate with weather. Every single telescope that we wanted to be on is on. Final scan on Sagittarius it started with us. This is it. Oh yeah, this is the, so this is it. The final scan of the 2017 observations. And then you really begin to feel the excitement. And you, you really feel that you're going to see something that is new and that nobody else has seen before. Shit, close the door. Okay, 
We ready? Wait, what, what is what is happening? Like, We're trying to make an image right now. Can we just, can we just like case things a little bit? <laughs> well, no. First of all. <laughs> When we take a picture on our camera, right, you believe that picture is exactly reality, right? You, you actually saw that with your own eyes and you can see, oh, okay, that matches. When we have, take a picture of a black hole with the Event Horizon Telescope, we don't get to, to see that. We don't know if the picture we generate is actually what the black hole looks like. And so we have to really think about this problem in a lot of different ways so that we're really confident when we get that picture. The end goal is to have this snapshot of reality, how a black hole really looks. You can imagine if you're holding a flashlight behind a black hole, that some of the photons would be far enough away, they'd just come to you. Some of them would be close to the horizon, and they get bent inward, but they would still make it to you. And some of them would be too close, and they'd fall into the black hole. And so the shadow of the black hole is this region where the photons behind it are getting trapped and so it's a circular area of diminished brightness on this bright ring around it. I think it's rare in research to have such a concrete prediction for something that no one's ever seen. So check my audio. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Monica, can you hear us? Okay, so I just want to start the first telecom which actually showing the first images of M87. I think the images are broad ecosystem. There is a shadow like feature. Wow, it worked. I mean, it definitely worked. It was surprisingly emotional. You know it from a mathematical point of view, and we've been looking at pictures quite similar to that from our own models. But when you look at it and you have to tell yourself that it's actually data, that you're not seeing a simulation, but you're really looking at a black hole, I found myself just with my cell phone staring at it for hours. So we see this ring. It's phenomenal. It's the result of my lifetime. We've seen the shadow of a black hole. But this story is just beginning. We've opened a window onto the event horizon that we never had before. We don't know how this book is going to end. All we know is that the first chapter has us hooked. And that's enough.